What have these got to do with water towers? Well, pressure. The goal of my local utility that provides my water is to make sure everyone gets roughly the same amount of water pressure. So in my water service area, the water pressure has to be designed for a minimum of 40 pounds per square inch and a maximum of 80 pounds per square inch, or PSI. Okay, PSI, what does that even mean? Well, imagine you have one square inch. It's super tiny, one inch by one inch. That's your area, and then you have an object whose footprint exactly matches this area. Now, if this object is 40 pounds just in this tiny inch, that's 40 pounds per square inch. Now back to the shoes. Which one do you think has a higher PSI? My high heels or my tennis shoes? Okay, well let's say the bottom of flat shoes are 3 inches wide and 9 inches long. That's 27 square inches multiplied by 2 because we have 2 shoes for a total of 54 square inches touching the ground. I'm about 120 pounds, so my pounds per square inch is, let's see, that's 120 pounds per 54 square inches, so 120 divided by 54, and that's 2.2 pounds per square inch. Now, if I choose my high heels, I still weigh the same, but the square inches are different. The front part is about 3 inches wide and 3 inches long, so that's 9 square inches, and I suppose the back of the heel is 1 inch by 1 inch, so that's 1 square inch. Now, adding the front and back together, we've got 10 square inches touching the ground per shoe, so 20 square inches total. 120 divided by that 20 square inches is 6 pounds per square inch. The high heels put almost three times as much pressure on the ground as my flat shoes. What about a ballerina on the smallest point of a shoe, where they're twirling on that super small area? Now, if I wore those, let's see, say the point is a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. I'd have 625 ten thousandths of an inch touching the ground. That's a super small area. Now, 120 pounds divided by that small area touching the ground is 1,920 pounds per square inch. So that's what PSI means. And as either surface area decreases or weight increases, PSI goes up fast. Calculating PSI is super important for water towers to function, right? Since we know that water weighs 62.4 pounds per cubic foot under normal temperature. Now we can calculate PSI using that in different scenarios. This represents the force at which water enters your home from the water tower. It can help water providers ensure that water enters homes within the 40 to 80 PSI range. Lower elevation homes experience greater pressure levels than high elevation homes, since more water is weighed down the farther you get from the water tower. My local utility has got to account for heights somehow. I mean, just looking outside, there's hill after hill and all sorts of elevation changes in my community. So that means houses are experiencing lots of different water pressures, right? Different PSI. We know if the pressure is too low, the water will just drip out of our faucets and not be very useful to us. But if the pressure is too high, that isn't good either. Pipes and appliances in my house are designed to be compatible with very specific water pressures. It would totally blow out the pipes in my house if the pressure was too high. They would just explode. This is where pressure zones come in. In large service areas with lots of elevation differences, water can be split into different distribution systems called pressure zones. Now, I live in Sammamish, so I get my water from Sammamish Plateau Water, and I'm looking at their city maps, and it looks like there's all these different pressure zones in Sammamish. I personally live in this green area, which indicates one pressure zone, and I live on a pretty big hill, but my friend lives closer to one of these wells, so I guess he gets his water from a different water source, and that's because he's in a different pressure zone. Pressure zone is an area where all the properties served by that water tower will have the same range of pressure, so these people down here, in this blue area of the map, have a different pressure than everyone in this green area, which is a whole new pressure zone. My friends in different parts of town, maybe over here in this pink area, or in the orange area over here, have all sorts of different pressures. Pressure reducing valves also help maintain water pressure in a lower range. The goal is that everyone gets roughly the same pressure. Pressure reducing valves get water in an acceptable range before it gets to people's houses. So in Sammamish, the transfer of water from higher to lower pressure zones is accomplished with these pressure reducing stations. And let's make sure that we don't have any pipes blown out because of high pressures. From the Sammamish maps, I found out that I'm in this higher pressure zone. What's your pressure zone? Do you think you're in the same or different one than a nearby friend?